have your Bibles, turn with us to 2 Kings, 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, verse 3, very familiar passage of Scripture. Let us stand we might read this word together. Are you standing? Turning, like we give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We like to give honor to our ministers, our deacons, all of God's children, trustees, all of God's children that are Amen. present here today. Thank God for us. doing a great job. Far doing an outstanding job. Second Kings, the 20th chapter, verse 3. Let's read that. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And I have done that which is good in thy sight, and that's the title of the sword. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to stand before your people again. We can't preach unless in the spirit of the That's living right. God come. Yes. Remove us, God, yes. that you might come forward. Jesus. And speak through these clay lips of ours. Help us understand that we all one day have to stand before you. Yes. And God, make preaching easy today. Yes. We ask you to just bless this way to congregation. Bless, Lord, bless. Not to see me. Not to hear me, but to That's hear right. you. Let's get to our hearts. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 From the scripture verse, I want to talk on a thought today entitled, Wait on God. Wait on God. He's sure to come. Wait on God. He's sure to come. Hezekiah, my brothers and sisters, this text here is speaking about how a remarkable king that he was. After King David, he was perhaps the most righteous and faithful king that reigned in Judah. King Hezekiah, I'm quite sure that we all know some history, <coughs> did some remarkable acts of service to the Lord. Mm -hmm. If we just pull out a few things, he protected the Lord's worship and purified it. He took worship seriously. He, yeah. he, he yeah. protected, he, he, he informed the people that everybody ought to worship God. He did not allow anything to come into God's house. Right. Any type of ways that were of God, he did not allow it to come. King Hezekiah was a man of prayer. His prayer are somewhat a model for us today. Pray with us for just a lot. Hezekiah presents his two-part prayer request to God in our text. When you get home, you can read uh, this chapter. His first prayer request is that his God might be glorified in the defeat. That was a situation where, amen, you had uh, an army coming up against God's people, but he wanted right. God to be glorified in the battle. Uh, this prayer it's easy to understand because any, I know we have some military people here, but any time a nation are in a war, we need help from God in order to win the battle. Yes, we do. The second prayer request is when Hezekiah himself, you know the story, he fell sick. Mm -hmm. Now things are... are, 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 are <coughs> getting a little bit complicated because we have uh, here the king have fallen sick. Mm -hmm. Second Kings, we read this together, uh, 20 uh, verse 3, it records uh, that brief prayer of King Hezekiah. Yeah. It says, I beseech thee, O Lord, mm -hmm. he's talking to God, remember now how I have walked before the thee in truth. And with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. The Bible concludes this verse by saying, And Hezekiah wept sore, meaning that he was crying. He cried out to God. <clears throat> wouldn't it be a wonderful, wouldn't it be wonderful, you and I, if we was able to pray a prayer like that? Yeah. Amen. But we can tell God, we can tell God what we have done for him. <clears throat> Amen. How faithful. We were to God. We, we ought to be able to have a communication line where we can tell God that God, I love you with all my heart. He already knows. King Hezekiah, he, his prayer was not a self-centered prayer. Right. Nor was his prayer sinful. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. We might view it as a king praying. He's telling God. And we might view that as being saved. <laughs> His prayer was the truth. We ought to be able to learn something today on this first Sunday in the year of 2015. We ought to be able to learn something from King Hezekiah's prayer to help us to become more faithful to God. Amen. Some folks are, are, are faithful in their speech more than in their walk. Uh, in their speech, everybody's wrong except for them. But in their walk, they are wrong themselves. Mm -hmm. Watch them. Don't judge them. Just pray for them. That's right. God don't want us to enter into this year out of his mercy. Hands to judge anybody. He just That's wants right. to pray. That's an old saying. Amen. It, 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 it ain't what we say, but what we do. It's easy to talk of the game. But uh, to live your talk is more powerful than what you say. <clears throat> you know, you can ask, I was asking a uh, young person, I was asking them, even though yesterday I said, how's your, how's your basketball game? I, well, I can shoot the three ball. But when they got on the court, no results. <laughs> King Hezekiah, he, 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 I'd like to thank him today. And I, I wish I had someone else here. That, that would thank King Hezekiah for teaching us how to pray and, and what to expect from the Lord as we pray. Amen. Amen. In order for you and I to profit from King Hezekiah's prayer, we have to view his problems. His problems was not his job. You know, he was a king, so he was over everything. It, it, what, if we go inside his house, he didn't have any marital problems. It wasn't his wife. It wasn't his children, because he had none. It wasn't his bank account, because he was a king and God made him wealthy. Think about that. It wasn't that he was over shopping. Over eating, he had no problem. He didn't need to lose some weight. A whole lot of us today, as we move into this year, we have some resolutions about losing some weight. <clears throat> so yeah, he, he didn't have that problem. He had no problem with keeping up with the Joneses. He had no, <clears throat> as we move into this year, he had no drinking problems, smoking problems, cheating problems, lying problems, shacking problems, gay problems, church control problems, bad attitude problems. Problems come to church <laughs> on certain Sundays because he loved God every day. He had no tithe and offering problems. He had no jealous, envy, or malice problems. Prepare yourself for preaching of 2015. God is getting ready to talk to us to prepare us and prep us for that great coming day of the Lord. Yes. King Hezekiah was sick. Matter of fact, he was very sick. Mm -hmm. You know the story, he was miserably sick. Anybody in here ever been miserably sick? Mm -hmm. you, you're glad to see folks, but you're glad to be feeling better when they leave. Mm -hmm. Then the prophet Isaiah, one of God's call out men, came to him and, and God had instructed him to take some peace and out of figs and rub them on his ailments, on his skin. That didn't do him any good. Church King Hezekiah is still kind of young. He's about 39 years of age. Yes. Yet he is sick mm -hmm. with, a, with a sickness unto death. Help me, Lord, preach this man. King Hezekiah has only been on the throne for 14 years. Yes. Now, he has a prophet coming to him, saying to him, he had better get his affairs in order. Yeah. All right. For he would surely die. Come on. Ain't that bad news? Yes. The prophet coming to him, telling him that he was going to die. Uh -huh. yeah. 
No one wanted a pastor, prophet, preacher, apostle, whoever person might be telling them that they was going to die. I'm sick and the pastor is telling me I'm going to die. Put yourself here today in King Hezekiah's shoes today. How would you feel if somebody came to you when you're on your sick bed addressing you, telling you get your stuff together. You're going to die. Well, let's do a little church talk here today. Come on, man. Can we do some today? Yes. Let's examine ourselves. Church folks talk. Didn't pastor Isaiah come and see it? Yes, but he did, but he brought me a message of doom. That ain't right. Not an encouraging word. No word that God is able. All right. He didn't even pray for me. He told me that I was going to die. Y'all need to hear me today because God is talking. Every word in the Bible won't make us shout. Every word in the Bible won't make us feel good. But it is the truth. Yes. As I close, will you come with me for a moment and let's look deep into Hezekiah's heart and let's see what he's wrestling with or worrying about. Hezekiah worries about the faithfulness and the reliability of God and his almighty promises. He sits there sick, worrying about how faithful God is. Amen. And worrying about, is God going to uphold his promises? Amen. Amen. King Hezekiah was known as one who that, that, that meditated on the scriptures mm -hmm. and believed he knew somewhat what the manuscript of God's word is talking about. Mm -hmm. And in the word of God, King Hezekiah knew that God had made some promises. Amen. And he made some promises to his people. Yes. He knew from his personal meditation of God's word that God wanted to showcase, amen, uh, his redeeming work among the nation. He knew that nobody was greater than God. And he knew that nobody on earth, below the earth, above the earth, is greater than God. King Hezekiah knew that God promised if you keep his statutes, you see he had some Bible in him and, and you keep his commandments that God had put into his word that he promised to lengthen of days to his people of Israel. I said if you, amen, uh, keep his statutes and obey his commandments, yes. he would give you more days on earth. Yes. Now, Hezekiah, he finds his life threatened. Mm -hmm. 14 years mm -hmm. on the throne. And now only 39 of age. Medication won't work. All right. And then, you know, you see the prophet had rubbed some stuff and got some stuff together. And then he put it on him, but it still wouldn't work. Somebody was telling me about somebody that you call, they can get rid of some stuff. And then some preacher on the radio talking about my nephew asked this morning, have you heard about it? I don't know his name. Have you heard about him? Amen. If, 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 if you call him and send him some money, he can get rid of some hats or whatever that bothers a person. I said, well, how much do it cost? Come on, come on.
you see him get that cream rubbed on him and the cream wouldn't do him any good and, and the prophet turned around and said you're going to die so he wrestled with God in prayer and he cries hard as he prayed he said I beseech thee O Lord look how he addressed God he said remember now how I have walked before thee in truth he's telling God you know everything but I want you to remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart I, in other words I did the best that I can do I did everything from my heart and it goes on and, and says and have done that which is good in thy sight
Thank you, Lord. Give me that one here today. Boy, well, I wish I could preach this thing like I was preaching it yesterday at home. What about the house, man? What about the house I was preaching yesterday at home? Uh, at home. <laughs> well, I was having all the white women out hollering out like, ah, in the house at home. Oh, he's good to me. Just wait, just wait. I know you're going through some stuff. You, you, you having a rough time. Just wait. Just wait, God. He, he's he's going to surely come. And he's coming to you. And everybody's going to know that God is with you. Can we give him a big hand?